This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a Frigidaire dishwasher. The customer mentioned that it just isn't draining. So we're going to take a look and see what could be doing it. So when we look in there, we see a lot of water. So something's preventing it from draining. We're going to check a few things. One thing we'll try first is just the cancel button. So we should hear, maybe we can hear the uh, drain motor kick in when we close it. We hear circulation, let's see if we can cancel it. This is a Frigidaire Gallery dishwasher. I'm going to remove this bottom panel. Just a couple of um, Phillips head screws holding it in. and then. You kind of feel what's going on with the drain pump. I don't hear anything, but sometimes you can feel it vibrating when the uh, impeller gets stuck. And also the drain motor will tend to get hot. So that's the circulation motor going. That sounds good. We look in here. This is the circulation motor here. Where my finger is, I can feel it. It's doing good. This is the fill valve. Drain motor must be behind. Yeah, I can see, actually see it. It's uh, basically on the other side of the circulation motor. Let me try the uh, cancel command again. <coughs> so right now it's doing circulation. Water shooting around. <coughs> So now we're doing cancel. Theoretically, that should go to drain now. It should activate it. I'm not hearing anything. Reach in here and feel anything. Oh, you know what? When I get closer, I can hear the drain motor humming. So what this means is that um, something got caught, like a little piece of glass, in the drain motor. So I'm going to get the dishwasher out and just get that little piece of glass or ceramic out. It's going to be pretty easy. First thing I'll do is I'll get the water out of the um, inside by bailing it out. You can just use like a, a mug or a cup to start the bailing. And then when you get near the end, I usually use a turkey baster. You even get a little pump, electronic pump that'll do this too. But it's pretty, pretty quick and easy just to use a cup. I'm bailing out the um, water. I decided to move a little bit of the filter and there's a lot, there's a lot of debris in here. So I think that there's just, there's just a ton of junk. And this is a case where the, where the customer does not, does not uh, rinse their dishes. And this is what will happen. The dishwasher will not work well, and it will, this, this is, yeah, this is the problem. So it's going to be a matter of just getting all this crud out from where the um, drain is, and it's going to work fine. And also it will clean a lot better once we remove all this stuff. So it is really wise to rinse your dishes. So uh, I got the filter off. And we can see the filter is massively clogged. So it's a wonder this machine could even clean dishes at all. It's just way too much debris. And I'm just using now, I got it, I bailed out most of the water. I'm just using a turkey baster to get the final amount. And we're going to see uh, if we can get all this crud out of the way. And then also we'll check on the drain pump because something is blocking the drain pump. I got a feeling it's just some of this some of this debris. Let me show you guys how we do this. But a lot of a lot of junk in there, right? That's all stuff that can get pulled into the circulation motor and cause all kinds of problems. So please rinse your dishes. Do the next step. So here's the turbidity sensor down here, and it's just got a bunch of crap in the way too. <laughs> Wow, he's going to get all this stuff out. Okay, that's the area called the sump. 
pretty clean. We're going to get a little cleaner and then I'm going to pull the dishwasher out and see what's clogging the pump itself. It could be all kinds of stuff. <laughs> all right. I'm going to wiggle the machine out a little further and get to that pump. So we got the dishwasher pulled out. We still have the water line connected. We have it unplugged. We have the drain line connected because the lines are long enough to allow you to pull it out. And we're just going to turn it on its side. So, lean it down. It's going to give us better access to the pump. See what's blocking it. So, <clears throat> here is our pump. And I'm trying to see what's going on inside. Let's take a look in here first. We're going to remove this one. So to check the air gap, uh, we already put something down in here. Seems clear, but I'm going to remove it from the sink and take a take a different look. So to do that, I'll spin this off. I'm going to push the whole thing down inside so I have a better access to it. Push this down inside. There's going to be a little gasket up here you want to keep for being watertight. <coughs> grab the gasket. Or grab the air gap. And this is just so you can get to these, these screws a little bit easier. what we want. That screw off. So I'm just pulling the drain hose off of the air gap right now. I can take a better look at what's going on. Here's my drain hose. Pretty good. So I'm pushing air in there pretty hard. I can hear it gurgling around in there. So I think we got good flow. Look inside this one. Let's make sure that's clear. You can see light through there. It looks good. I like it. So there was some resistance and now I can hear it flowing. Maybe maybe something in the tube got shot through. Let's see if it's gonna work now. So put that tube back on. Up on the air gap. Put this one back up. Tighten up that screw. I'm going to push this thing back up, and what I usually do is I'll put my finger down here so I can kind of feel, use my other hand, push it up in there. It helps me index it so I can find it. There it is. Push it up, gasket on there, and I'm going to thread this nut back on the air gap. I'll take this dishwasher for a test drive, see how it's doing. When a uh, test I like to do is when it does drain, I'm going to let it fill up, I'm going to let it drain. I like to see water shoot out of this about that high, maybe three or four inches. And I know the drain's really doing good. So I'm going to leave the cap off here for a second. We're going to start the dishwasher. Here we got power. It says power failure. That's normal because it's telling you the power went out. I'm going to select the cycle. You quick wash, 50 minutes start. It's letting water in. See what happens. We have a full contingent of water now. <coughs> Circulation motor is active, and we can actually hear it shooting around a lot better 
than it did previously. And that was the result of this filter being so clogged. So we're gonna also clean that. Next thing I'll do is I'll press cancel. I wanna see if I get a, some water coming out there. A little water left. I think the drain's working now. I think we got rid of the obstruction. I'm gonna close it. Yeah, so we can see a big column of water shooting up. That's a good, good drain. Okay, put that back on. Put that back. We're just getting the surface stuff off of the screen. And you gotta get in here and get all this stuff out too. Because that is where the water flows. Should flow, wants to flow. So this filter's pretty good. It looks like it trapped a lot of the stuff before it got into the mechanism. But some definitely got in. Look at this stuff. So thick. <clears throat> so this one, this port has to go that way. Locked in. This back in. I'm gonna put these screws back in. Putting in the last screws. We can hear the circulation motors just really doing good, pushing the water around really well. So that's a result of it being a lot cleaner. It was on quick wash. I'll cancel. Should start the drain motor. There we go. So it's flowing really good. We can hear it back working good. So thanks so much for watching and please subscribe when you get a chance. Things we did again was we cleared the air gap and we made sure there was nothing obstructing the impeller and we cleaned the filter, a lot of bad stuff in there. So again, thanks for watching.